So I'm going to read us chapter 6 all the way to the end of our Spartacus story by Russell Punter. Now this looks like a fiction storybook, um, but actually historians have lots of bits of evidence that suggest that these events happened in real life and then it's been made into a book for us to read. So the historians have used all their sources of information to work out whether this story did happen and whether it was true. So it's a story for us to read, but these events did happen in history. A deadly enemy. Meanwhile in Rome, the senators were becoming more and more frustrated by Spartacus. There must be someone who can deal with this upstart, moaned one. So these are the senators and they're the people that kind of rule over Rome and they're getting fed up with Spartacus who's forming a huge, huge army of all these rebels, all these people that they believe haven't done the right thing um, and they're fighting lots of battles and they've had enough so they want to get rid of him. I've asked for volunteers, said another, but so far no one has. I hear you need help. A gruff voice interrupted. The senators turned to see Marcus Licinius Crassus, the richest man in Rome. Can you defeat this common gladiator? asked the senator. With the right men, he replied. Crassus coolly, replied Crassus cruelly. He may have been wealthy, but he wanted glory too. So this means that this man, Crassus, or Crassius, um, is a really wealthy man. And you can kind of tell that by the way that he's dressed. But also he wants glory. What do you think that might mean if he wants glory? It means that he wants people to kind of bow down to him and... Um, really congratulate some, um, him on something great that he's done and the glory that he wants is defeating, getting rid of, killing Spartacus. We can spare you 10 legions, said the senator. That's 50,000 trained soldiers. Crassius smirked, then Spartacus is as good as dead. By now Spartacus had headed south to a place called Ancona. Crassius set off in pursuit. On the way, he sent a message to Mummius, the commander of two legions near Spartacus's camp. Tell him to steer his men behind Spartacus, he told the messenger, but not to attack until I say so. Yes, sir. Mummius, however, was eager to finish off Spartacus himself, so it so now Mummius wants that, jet, that um, glory instead of Crassius. Ignoring Crassius, his legions engaged the rebels in battle. Mummius was defeated and worse was to come. A punishment for disobeying him, Crassius decided that the surviving troops should be decimated. So using the picture as the clue and words up in this word decimated, what word could go in place there instead of decimated? What did you come up with? The troop should be killed. Decimated means get rid of it, kill them. As the soldiers were divided into groups of ten and made to draw lots, the unlucky man in each group who picked the black stone from a bag of white ones was killed. Having shown his own troops who was boss, Crassius turned attention to Spartacus. So Crassius has gone in and destroyed some um, other soldiers to, to show him, to show them, sorry, that he means business and he's powerful and he's strong. For the first time, Spartacus found himself against an enemy as strong as he was. Crassius won battle after battle. The rebels were forced to Brutium at the southern tip of Italy. And this map here shows you, so this is Italy, and lots of people know the shape of Italy because it looks like a boot with a high heel. It looks like a big, tall boot with, here's the heel. And Brutium is here. So they're coming in and forcing Spartacus and his rebel army right into this little bit of land here. Because if they're stuck here, the only way to escape is onto this yellowy bit, which is actually the sea. You can see the seas here. 
we've got Trianian Sea and the Ionian Sea. So if they get stuck there, it means that they're more likely to be able to destroy or decimate them. We must have reinforcements, decided a weary Spartacus, and I think I know where to find them. Chapter 7, Plotting with Pirates. Spartacus set, sat outside a rough dockside tavern. So a dock is where you'd kind of tie up boats and a tavern would be a little kind of restaurant or place where um, the Romans would have hung out together. The place was full of pirates who plundered Roman ships across the Mediterranean. We heard that word plundered when they plundered all the weapons at the start of the story. So we have a deal then, said Spartacus, handing over a bag of coins to two tough looking pirates. You'll take 2,000 of us across to Sicily. So let's go back to this map. So they know they're getting stuck here. They've spoken to some pirates who have boats and they want them to take them along this little bit of sea in the middle to get them over to Sicily. So they're escaping from Cressius and his army. Spartacus knew they had... Spartacus knew they had once been a slave rebellion on Sicily. He was sure he could persuade them to rebel once more and join him. So once there was a rebel army here, and they might have stopped fighting together, but the people are still around living their lives. So Spartacus is hoping he can take his army to this island of Sicily and get them to join his army so it's even bigger. It says agreed, so they've agreed this deal. But when Spartacus and his followers arrived at the docks the next morning, as arranged, the pirates were nowhere to be seen. Spartacus felt a fool. We've been betrayed, he growled. Now we'll have to head north in search of more men. It was going to be more difficult than Spartacus could ever imagine. Chapter 8. The Final Battle While Spartacus had been plotting, Crassius had advanced trapping his enemy in the toe of Italy and it's called the toe because as I said it's this little bit here so Spartacus has just said oh actually we're going to head this way north to try and get some more men when they do have to fight Crassius and his army but you can see here that his army is coming in this way Crassius is and Spartacus is going that way and they're going to meet in the middle while Spartacus had been plotting, Crassius had advanced, that means had gone forward into the area, trapping his enemy in the toe of Italy. His men built a vast barrier across Brutia, from the Tyrrhenian Sea to the Ionian Sea. Spartacus was cut off. That's what I was describing earlier, cut off and he couldn't escape anywhere else. By now it was winter, 71 BC. We'll wait until spring before we attack, Crassius told his officers. The rebels will have run out of food. They'll be too weak to stop us. But the senators in Rome were impatient for victory. Crassius heard that they were sending a general named Pompey to finish the job. So they've been waiting for Crassius to kill Spartacus and the senators, the people that rule Rome, have thought, you're taking far too long. I'm going to send in this person, Pompey, who's just going to go and do the job and kill him. Crassius didn't want anyone else stealing his glory, his limelight, his moment where everybody would be congratulating him. I'll have to attack now, he decided. Spartacus knew he had to act too. He took a third of the rebel army and managed to break through Crassius's barrier. You can see the barrier here. They've broken through it to try and get further north to get more troops, which means more people in their army. Crassius sent his legions south to fight the rebels that were left behind. It was an easy victory for the Romans. Spartacus calculated there were now less than 40,000 men left from his once mighty rebel army. He planned to lead his followers east to Brundisium to escape by the sea. So we can see Brundisium is here. He was trapped in the tow back here, but he's managed to break down the army. The barrier so he's going to follow this bit the remainder of his army the 40,000 people and go to Brundinium Brundisium to see if they can escape by the sea there but he was frustrated to find it occupied by legions that had just arrived from Macedonia but some other people have arrived there to stop them 
turning back the rebels wanted one last glorious battle let us have victory or death they declared spartacus was forced to agree a few days later the slaves came face to face with cassius and his legion near the river Celanus, Celarus. Spartacus led from the front. The fighting was hard and bloody. Swords clashed, spears flew in all directions. The air was filled with cries of war and screams of death. The rebel slaves fought bravely, but it was their last taste of battle. I'm going to cover this bit up. If it's their last taste of battle, it means nothing to do with them eating a battle, even though it says taste. But it says it was their last taste of the battle. So what do you think that could mean? The last taste. It means the last time they're going to be battling. Because, unfortunately, or you might think fortunately, Crassius manages to defeat them. Crassius had any rebel survivors captured then executed, that means killed. In the confusion of the battle, no one saw what finally became of Spartacus. Crassius's legionaries searched the battlefield for his body, but the remains of the infamous rebel leader were never discovered. That's the end of the story. I like how it's kind of left on a dun-dun-dun moment. There's lots of tension. So nobody really found out what happened to Spartacus. It seems that he wasn't one of the people that was killed or captured and then executed. So what happened to that brave rebel leader?